iBook versus Netbook. The age-old question that nobody ever asked. Who would win? Stay tuned. Let's take a look at the hardware first that we'll be comparing in this video. On the left we have the ASUS EPC901 with an Intel Atom N270 running at 1.6 GHz with hyperthreading, so it has two threads. 2 GB of DDR2, 64 GB of IDE SSD storage, Intel GMA950 graphics and Windows XP. The iBook is the iBook G4 mid-2005 14-inch with a 1.42 GHz G4 CPU, 1.5 GB of DDR1, 128 GB of IDE SSD storage, Mobility Radeon 9550 graphics and OS X 10.5.8 Leopard. To spice things up a little bit, we're taking a look at some reference systems as well. We have a reference PC and a reference Mac. The reference PC is a Compaq Evo D300 with a 2.6 GHz Northwood Pentium 4, 1.5 GB of SDR RAM, 80 GB of storage, a Radeon X1650 and Windows XP. The reference Mac will be a 2008 MacBook with 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo, 4 GB of DDR2, a SATA SSD, GMA X3100 graphics and OS X 10.6.8 Snow Leopard, which will kneecap a little bit by running some benchmarks in Rosetta. That particular last choice was made just so we could run all of the same benchmark versions across all of the systems without uh, compromising the results in any way. The benchmarks we'll be running on these systems will be Cinebench 9.5, Geekbench 2.2, Handbrake 0.9.4, which we'll use to transcode a 1 minute 22 720p clip to MP4, a zip compress test and decompress test of a 100 megabyte folder. We also run two games, Quake 3 Arena 64480 at the lowest settings for best CPU scaling performance, and Minecraft 1.5.2 running on a multiplayer server. Our first benchmark will be Cinebench 9.5. This benchmark stresses the CPUs by performing software rendering tasks. The fastest CPU by far is the Core 2 Duo, followed by the Pentium 4, followed by the PowerPC G4, followed by the Intel Atom. The EPC901 is definitely a lot slower when it comes to CPU rendering tasks. Next up is Geekbench 2.2, in which we see some varying scores. The EPC901 could not complete the benchmark because there was a time difference between the internal clock and Geekbench 2's clock, so it was too slow to complete. The iBook G4 did well with 541, the Evo D300 matched its reference points with almost a thousand points, and the MacBook 2008 is obviously a bit too quick for Geekbench 2.2, scoring almost 3000 points. Up next is Handbrake, which will remux a H.264 720p 1 minute 22 second video down to MP4 format. What we can see here is that the EPC and Compact Evo D300 have the best encoding times. The iBook G4 and MacBook from 2008 are a bit slower here. It seems that the Mac version of Handbrake at this point in time was not quite as optimized. The MacBook was running in Rosetta again. To see how well these machines compress and decompress archives, we've set up some benchmarks to do a decompress and compress test. What we see here is that the EPC is the slowest machine overall. While the iBook is a bit slow in compression, the decompression performance on the Mac is very impressive indeed. The Compact Evo and MacBook are evenly matched overall. The first of our two gaming benchmarks is Quake 3 Arena. All of the machines tested were able to uh, get to the 60fps magical number. EPC only just, followed by the iBook, the MacBook and then the Compact D300. They all performed reasonably well at 640x480 low details. And our final game and final benchmark is Minecraft 1.5.2. And here are the results. As we can see, it is not playable on any of these systems. Um, the EPC especially did very poorly, um, 2 FPS. The iBook and MacBook both did 10 FPS average and the Compact D300 pushed out a mighty 17 FPS in a 1024 by 768 situation with normal render distance on a multiplayer server that already had all the chunks loaded in beforehand. So yeah, none of these systems can run Minecraft at all. Which isn't that surprising and uh, you can judge by the footage on your screen that uh, it's not a great experience overall. And with that we come to our conclusion. As you can see the iBook G4 beat the EPC 901 in Cinebench, Geekbench, 
decompress and compress tasks, Quake 3 Arena, and Minecraft. So overall, to answer the question we asked ourselves in the beginning of the video, iBook versus Netbook, who would win? The answer is iBook. And you could say that, well, the Netbook was always a very cheap option. Well, keep in mind that this netbook came out in late 2007, early 2008, and by then this iBook would have been about three years old, so the prices for them wouldn't have been very different. So if you uh, were posed with the choice to get a netbook or an iBook in 2008, you should have bought the iBook. I guess that's our takeaway for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.